Equal pay is actually um, a requirement by the law. It has been for 50 years where people are paid the same for equivalent or like jobs. What the gender pay gap represents is an overall representation of how women and men are compensated in the workforce, uh, and it's the comparison of that. And it reflects uh, workforce composition, pay rates, time taken out of the workforce, um, and our occupational and industrial segregations that we have highly feminised both uh, industries and jobs. Mm. Okay, so the gender pay gap is closing, but not by much. That's right. So our latest census of employers who employ over 100 people shows that the gender pay gap for all remuneration, the, the entire salary and superannuation bonuses that people receive is 22.8%, um, over $25,000 uh, each and every year. So still very significant. Um, and we've also seen that uh, that's reflected in the fact that our workforce composition um, is highly male dominated at the senior levels and including in boards. We have boards, 76% of which uh, have more than 60% men and 22% of our boards have only men. So what's your uh, overall reaction to your other findings that women earn on average much less than men and that men are twice as likely to be earning the big bucks than women? Well, it's an opportunity for business to address these issues because what we know is that not only is it good for the workforce when there's more equality in the workforce, uh, it's also good for the business outcomes, for productivity, for profitability um, and for value. So companies can step up, they can do a pay gap analysis to understand uh, where those gaps and differences are, um, set targets and plans to address it and importantly, uh, report and engage with the board in terms of those gaps uh, and what the plans are to to change it. And uh, what we know, um, as I've said, um, when companies take these actions, they have better performance as a result. There has been some debate, though, Mary, about uh, the figures. Some say that the, um, the pay gap doesn't compare like for like roles. And also gender pay gap sceptics point to the argument that women are paid less because they opt to work less. What's your response to that? Well, as we've said, uh, this doesn't choose to reflect uh, like-for-like -like roles. We explicitly say it's not. It's about overall how women and men are valued, um, and we know it exists. Um, women uh, make choices in the context of the, the environment and the structure that they have. Men make those choices as well. Um, so if there's not childcare available, women can't choose to work more or return to work um, after they've taken uh, leave or had a child. Um, this, uh, the numbers we do also, we annualised so it reflects the full-time roles um, not uh, diminished hours so it is a comparison of genuinely how women and men are valued um, and we know that it exists in every industry in every occupation and no matter how you calculate it uh, a gender pay gap in favour of men exists. Mary why is it taking so long to close this gap? Well, it's a, a very long time. Our analysis shows it's going to be at least 25 years to address the gender pay gap. Um, we need greater commitment uh, and prioritisation of these issues, of, of having a more gender balanced workforce, particularly at the senior levels, uh, in our boards, um, so that uh, people who are making the decisions, uh, they translate through down the organisation. Um, we need that leadership, we need the commitment. We're seeing it from some companies, but not enough. Um, and we know that it's good for their workforce. Um, the labour market is tight. Uh, this is the time to step up and show that clear commitment to gender equality um, and companies will be rewarded in terms of their workers and their profitability.